remember the paper we're referencing and we're basically following pretty closely, at least in terms of the, the calculations and the structure of the calculations, is this paper doing it now or later, where we're talking about comparing situations, you know, situation one where the individual is time consistent or rational, one where the person is time inconsistent, they have a desire for immediate gratification, but they're not self-aware enough to realize that they have this desire for immediate gratification. And then we have what we would call the sophisticated but time inconsistent individual, where that individual still has an irrational desire for immediate gratification, still has time inconsistent preferences, but they're aware of their own time inconsistency. And what we're mainly concerned with doing is comparing the behavior of that sophisticated individual with what we were calling the naive individual or the person that's not self-aware in terms of their own irrationality. And so in class I had given you very easy numbers to work with because I didn't want to sit here worrying about, you know, doing the calculations on your phone over and over, stuff like that, you know, wondering, worrying about whether we have enough decimal places and so on and so forth. So I figured for the purposes of your discussion question, we could go through something that, you know, again, is not mathematically challenging, but it does require a little bit more computation. The structure is still the same. The numbers are just different. But we could see what was going on here and give you somewhat of a less trivial example of these behaviors. So again, we said, you know, we're going to consider these four, again, they're unpleasant tasks, at least for this first exercise. And we know that they're unpleasant because you're getting negative utility from doing them. And just as a reminder, just to clarify, just like we said before, you don't have the option to do any of these tasks on any of the days. So for example, you can't do task A on day four or something like that. Then if you could, this would be a trivial problem because Technically speaking, you know, if we have something to consume and that thing is going to be the <coughs> exact same thing regardless of whether we consume it today or tomorrow, even the rational time consistent person would generally prefer that item today than tomorrow. Like we discount the future generally speaking. The only time when these questions become interesting is when we face a trade off. And if you think about as far as unpleasant tasks are concerned, we face a trade-off here because all else being equal, doing something, doing something in the future is less bad than doing it today, but we don't have an all else being equal situation because the longer we wait, the more you know, in the moment disutility our task gives us. That if these numbers were reversed, if I asked you, hey, would you rather do the negative 15 task on day one or the negative 10 task on day four? This would not be an issue, right? Because you're like, wait, I get to wait and do the thing that's less bad? Well, yeah, obviously. So you only see that this is an interesting question when we have either increasing disutility or if we have, if we're thinking about pleasant tasks, increasing utility, right? that if it wasn't the case that the thing tomorrow was better than the thing today, there'd be no reason to wait. Right? So that's why you see when we think about these different activities, the reason that this is even something that's in question is because we have that trade-off between our time preferences and the trajectory of the different activities themselves. So whatever this potential activity is, if we're on day one, we only get to do A. If we're on day two, we only have the option to do B. If we're on day three, we only have the option to do C. And if we're on day four, we only have the option to do D. These things are getting worse. And we, you know, we talked about the doing the dishes example before. You could think about this as taking out the trash. You could think about there are actually a lot of real life processes <coughs> that exhibit this sort of pattern. I was even saying before class that I have writing deadlines that are the end of the month. And yes, I procrastinate. I'm not, you know, I might be self-aware, but I'm certainly not entirely time consistent. 
And even that exercise, even though it's literally the same bit of writing, that writing is more unpleasant when I feel like I'm rushed. So that in and of itself even approximates this process where the longer I wait, the more unpleasant the task gets. Right? So this time, we said we have our time-consistent individual. Her discount factor is 0 0.9. Remember that the discount factor for the time-consistent individual, the time-consistent individual only has a delta. Right? So this is a, you know, this is akin to saying that delta is 0.9. So we can go through these numbers and we can say, all right, what's this person going to do? Rather than torture you, put the numbers out here like this. And what we're considering, because we're thinking about planning for the future, right? So we talked about this notion of the present value of that utility. Because if we're trying to compare things that are happening at different points in time, we have to put them, you know, we have to put them all on equal footing. And we said, well, for the time consistent individual, that individual just applies a discount factor delta for each period that something is in the future. So here, this first column, well, if we're taking this from the perspective of day one, activity A is on day one, it doesn't get discounted at all. Activity B is on day two, this is just delta times the utility of that task, which is negative 11, right? So we just get 0.9 times negative 11. Our C, from the perspective of today, is two days in the future, so this is just delta squared times negative 12, doing that right, yeah. And then our task D is three days in the future, so delta cubed times negative 15. And we can see this and we can say, all right, all we can do if we're trying to plan for the future and we're trying to maximize our utility in that way, what the rational individual is actually doing, and I don't know if this has ever been made explicit to you, but what the rational individual is doing is maximizing the present value of their lifetime utility. So knowing that, saying, oh, okay, so they're trying to maximize the present value of their utility, they're picking the thing here that's the least bad, which seems to be activity C, right? So we can say on day one, they're gonna plan to do activity C, which happens to be on day three. And then we move forward and said, all right, when day two approaches, what task will this person decide to complete? Well, we could do the same thing from the perspective of day two. Now activity B is not discounted. Activity C is discounted by one day. And activity D is discounted by two discount factors, right? So we would just have delta times negative 12 and delta squared times negative 15. Remember with our exponential discounting, this is the situation where we said as we move forward in time, all we're really doing is dividing all of our present values by delta. If we're dividing all of our present values of all the tasks by delta, there's no way we can switch which one is best. So we should already know and we can see based on the numbers that this person is still going to say that task C is the best. And then we can say, when it comes time to complete the task, well, that would be day three. So when day three approaches, will this person actually make good on their plan? Well, again, we calculate those, those present values. Now, task C is not discounted. Task D is discounted by one discount factor because it's now one day in the future. So this would be just delta times negative 15. It still looks like task C is the best. That this is exactly what we meant by time consistency. That regardless of when we made this plan, whatever is optimal from that, you know, at that point of planning will also be optimal as we move forward in time. There will be no changing your mind. 
unless, of course, there's an actual external change in the world that's changing the underlying utilities. So we have this time consistent person. So right, I'm going to do task C on day three. We're cool when it comes to day three. I do the task. Very simple. 